Okay, we are here to talk about a really important part of Swedish history that greatly impacts the culture of this nation today. Fika. Fika, in its simplest form, is a coffee break with treats, but it's so much more than that. This tradition is deeply ingrained in the people and culture of Sweden. We'll get more into what Fika is, but first let's look at how it began. Fika began with coffee. Coffee, believe it or not, has quite a complicated past in Sweden. It was introduced in the 1600s and was mostly popular in wealthier classes. King Adolf Frederick, however, wasn't a fan of people drinking coffee, so he placed heavy taxes on it. Apparently, that wasn't deterrent enough, and 10 years later, coffee was completely banned. King Gustav III, among other past leaders of Sweden, was also not a fan of the drink and ran a pretty hilarious experiment about coffee's ills that I sadly don't have time to cover in this video. In total, between 1756 and 1817, coffee was made illegal in Sweden five separate times. What a jolting on again, off again relationship that must have been for Swedes. And legend has it that while coffee was banned, people still met to drink it in secret. Finally, in the 1820s, the government permanently lifted the ban on coffee. Now, Sweden is the third largest coffee consumer per capita in the entire world. Supposedly, the slang word coffee had its syllables inverted to form from it the word fika. I love a good play on words. I also love a good baked sweet, and so do Swedes. It didn't take long before coffee and fika bread were regular companions during fika. Fika bread is a name that covers a variety of delectable treats served during fika. And the addition of patisseries in 19th century Sweden only added to this wonderful grouping of food. Okay, let's go ahead and call it what it is, a food group. Figure bread is an essential food group. These baked delights range from apple cakes and the ever popular cinnamon buns to semlas leading up to Lent and the dreamy princess cake. That's a favorite of Matt's. When Matt and I traveled to Sweden in 2016, we fell in love with not just the tasty delight of fika, but the ritual. The time with friends and family, coworkers and neighbors, sharing a good chat, a great cup of coffee, and a sweet. We brought this home and began the practice of fika with the boys because it's so much more than a custom or a break. It's a state of mind, of slowing down, of mindfulness. Sharing fika with our boys in Sweden in January was extra special for us. In this world of busyness, it's important to preserve and honor that time of connection, of fika with each other. And it's awfully delicious too. Thanks for time traveling with us. History never tasted so good.